Agriculture on the move. My name is Philip Sydney, your host. All those who are watching us here in St. Lucia, those on YouTube, I'd like to give you, bid you welcome. As usual, I have said before previously on two of my programs, this year is Agriculture Year for Programs. I know my minister, the Honorable Alfred Prosper, is smiling from air to air because a lot is happening and a lot will be happening. Uh, so far, the farmers have received a lot of support. They we began with fertilizers, which they have received over the past month. Uh, we also have the fishers who are getting support, and crop farmers will continue to get support. You have heard what is in store for them. And today, this program is specifically for the livestock farmers. So please continue. We view the program, Last of Farmers, a lot is in store for you. There is a program called the UBEC program, Unleashing the Blue Economy of the Caribbean, and there's a sub-program where we are looking at the emergency plan, looking at support in response to our food insecurity here. With me today is Mr. Dean Alfred, um, April, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> who is our livestock te technical officer in the... Department of Agriculture, and uh, of course, welcome to the program, Mr. Avril. Thank you very much, sir. Good Is morning. Avril or, A uh, or Avril? A or A? Avril. Chief, tell us about the UBEC project. Give us an overview of this project. All right, so the UBEC project is a World Bank funded project. St. Lucia is one of the participant countries, um, like you said, on the blue economy of the Caribbean. Um, what is very interesting about this project, though, recognizing the integrated linkages that exist because everybody knows blue economy talks about fisheries and the sea and the maritime space so then persons might be thinking okay what does agriculture and livestock have to do with the blue economy right. but in essence if we look at anything that has to be done sustainably from an environmental standpoint agriculture is connected to the marine space by use of water and what we do with our waterways and the same thing with our livestock as well livestock has impact on the environment and in so doing can also affect the marine space um, and it also has a solid waste management component as well so again realistically speaking if we have to pay attention to any one of those um, when you call them subsectors, it is very useful and very good that we are taking an integrated approach, looking at all of the sectors in unison because they all affect other. one another. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Okay, so let's zero in on livestock. Um, where does that program assist the livestock uh, sector? All right. So again, it is very, very, very refreshing that at this stage the livestock sector is getting some attention. Because livestock is often looked at as the, the outside child <laughs> of the agriculture ministry, <laughs> all right? Like it or not. Like yeah? So it is very, very, very good that livestock is getting some much needed attention and some much needed support. And under the contingency emergency response component of the project, looking at, you know, recovering from some of the impacts of even COVID, mm -hmm. right, on the livestock sector. I mean, you could just imagine we had a situation in St. Lucia where farmers were unable to go and tend to their animals. Yeah because of lockdown you could imagine that right now this is an animal this is a living being and imagine these that you can't go and see about them and this that so of course that would have significant impacts on production so just that recovery alone that is something that is very 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 important for livestock as well the other thing that we need to pay attention to from a food security standpoint St. Lucia I would consider to be a meat-eating country all right there's very little food that we consume especially our lunch that we don't consume some form of animal protein also when we talk about our food import bill oftentimes we don't disaggregate it and break it down to look at livestock in terms of animal protein components because whereas you have high value commodities um, or high volume commodities like flour rice and sugar but when you look at the value 
of animal of animal products. It's quite significant. Very significant. Yeah. So again, if we're talking food security, food import bill, and all of these things, livestock has to be part of that conversation. Mm -hmm. All right. So again, taking a, f a final final look at livestock production, mm -hmm. the project focuses on five areas: um, livestock nutrition, improving on the forage feeding aspects of our, especially our ruminants. All right. How do we improve on that? Because there's a lot that we can do. Um, animal breeding, you always say, anytime you talk to farmers, they always talk about better breeds, improved breeds. I want bigger breeds. I want this, that, that. So there is a component in breeding and genetics um, that we're looking to import mm -hmm. some renewed bloodlines for about four species, cattle, sheep, goats, and pigs, right? That we look to integrate into the breeding program that the ministry has going on to see how we can bring about some upgrades within the sector. There is a water component. Now again, paying attention to livestock just like you would crops. We talk about water conservation and irrigation and all of that. The same thing applies to animal production. Water is a key component. So there is a water conservation and storage component that talks about, and you will see the launch of that tomorrow with the water tank distribution to approximately 500 livestock farmers that is supposed to start tomorrow. Um, so I think in Region 8. So you will see now some efforts being made towards that water security program for livestock. Mm -hmm. Then you also talk about on the aspect of training. There's always a need for training. Um, so there's a significant training component that talks about animal husbandry, more breeding again, water component, how significant that is, and other husbandry practices that can help us improve on what it is that we're doing. And lastly, but most importantly, the health and disease management mm -hmm. of livestock. There is that component as well. And that speaks to, again, diagnostic services that we're able to provide at the level of the ministry. And of course, all of the support that our animal health technicians and our vets provide in terms of keeping our animals healthy, again, because we expect to eat them. So keeping our animals healthy, keeping our herds healthy, that sort of thing. So that is another component as well. Okay. So is there a, a number of farmers that you are targeted or, or are you all working specifically with the, um, for example, the livestock division officers to guide you that process? Right. So definitely it's a sort of hand in hand sort of thing. So the project on its own can't do everything. So we are working very closely with the veterinarian livestock division of the ministry. And that sees us working region by region and targeting not just the, uh, the 500 farmers that have been identified so far for water tank distribution, that's just one component. But when you talk about now the breeding and genetics component, that will touch farmers across the length and breadth of St. Lucia. When we talk again of how we go about improving on nutritional aspects, okay, because one of the things that we need to pay attention to is breeding and genetics on its own, we can get the best genetics but if these animals aren't managed properly, if they aren't grown properly, they will never perform the way that they're supposed to. So we have to pay, cri pay critical attention to our nutrition components, water, and overall management of these animals. So you will see over the next few months that, that, that scope being broadened to touch as many livestock farmers as possible when it comes to all of those aspects that I mentioned. And in particular, the training again we always have to have that ongoing exchange of information and stuff like that. The other day I looked at some figures and looking at like weaning of piglets, the weights that we're weaning at when we market pigs, the weight that we're marketing at, the time taken to market these animals. And we definitely have a lot of work to do, especially when it comes to improving on the efficiency of those processes. So there's, there's a lot of work to do. The project can do everything, but we're definitely going to push a lot in the next, in the next six months. Of course, in the breeding component, of course, I'm sure you're looking at artificial insemination, AI. Um, you're hoping to bring in semen from overseas? Okay. Yep. And, um, but years ago, the AI I knew was only for cattle. But now I think you're doing it for pigs, you're doing it for sheep and goats, right? So there is a component to construct an AI lab at the newly constructed station in Volet, Volet yeah. livestock station. Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to do now is a lot of the systems and processes that were lost when Bosejo was closed mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. Bosejo wasn't just a physical location. 
right? There were a lot of processes, there were a lot of yeah. systems in place, records, and a lot of that. So we lost a lot of a lot of stuff. As you see, this it, it, it touches me because, boy, it's a soft a soft spot for me. Trust me, <laughs> to continue. So now <laughs> it, it, there's a lot of rebuilding to yes, do a lot. and reinstating a lot. some of those systems. Mm -hmm. So we're actually now on every Friday we're linking up with the officers down at the station, mm -hmm. helping to put back some of those systems, the record keeping systems, your animal management systems, mm -hmm. and then that now will see us feeding into the whole breeding program the information that is needed for selection to be able to guide semen collection we, we're hoping to be able to achieve semen collection for three or four species okay. the cattle the pigs the sheep and goat okay all right trying to see again we also need to start to generate our own supplies because mm -hmm. just like you say we have traditionally we have imported semen imported mm -hmm. imported mm -hmm. imported mm -hmm. imported mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I know of local instances where we have animals that are performing well under our conditions. Correct. These animals should also be part of that breeding program. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so definitely the collection, storage of semen, mm -hmm. that is something that we're going to localize. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to that, build on to the existing artificial insemination program to cross more than just cattle. So pigs will be included, sheep and goats will be included, so that way we can broaden the horizon and the scope for our AI program. So the lab will be constructed under that program? Yes. Great. Okay. Most importantly, too, I think everything is important, you know, <laughs> but I get to this, the, the, the AI and the breeding system that you all have in place. The nutrition part of it is crucial in terms of feed. Yeah. Because uh, over the years, we have had a problem for proper feed, feed, feeding systems in St. Lucia. Well, moving forward, well, what is the project doing to ensure that availability of proper feed and also the, the, the ratio is available. Right. So, like we were talking about earlier, the performance of any, any group of genetics is highly hinged on how mm -hmm. well we feed them. Definitely. Right. And under the program, we're looking at now fine-tuning our forage production aspect. Because forage production is one of the ways that we can significantly impact the cost of producing yes. our animals. Yes. All right. Yeah. Now, another general concept, not everything that's green is good quality grass. True. All right. Part two, zeb, zeb, or zeb, yep. if you want to call mm, it that. Zeb, zeb. Exactly. <laughs> right. And uh, even, even in conversation so far, in talking about, okay, how do we produce good quality forage? Mm -hmm. All right. I mentioned into the fact that, okay, we need to start looking at a fertilizer program. Correct for our fodder banks and so on. And you mm -hmm. see some people raising their eyebrow like, yes, mm -hmm. forage is a crop mm -hmm. and it has to be treated and managed as such. Mm -hmm. All right, so irrigation, the same that you would apply to other crops, irrigation, fertilizer regimes, manure, and all of these things, these go into good forage production programs. Definitely. So there's a paddock that we're working on now at Volet that will be used as a demonstration type paddock. Okay. Um, we want to also highlight the fact that we have a number of plant species that can be used to feed animals mm -hmm. that we take for granted, all right? You have things like the Lucina, I think we call it wild tambourine, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. You have Glorisida, right? You have a thing called Trichanthera. You mm -hmm. have some wild sunflowers. You have a, a lot. number of species, all right, or plants that can significantly contribute to feeding animals and feeding livestock that we're just not really paying much attention to. So that program will look to highlight some of those, mass produce them. Um, one of the models that I want to see us um, bring back here is the sugarcane model mm -hmm. for yes. feeding livestock. Yes. Yes. Right? Sugarcane yes. is a yes. very good energy source. It is, it is. You understand? Mm -hmm. So there are things that we can do yeah. that can help to impact our production systems from a nutrition standpoint, mm -hmm. help to add a lot of feed ingredients mm -hmm. that have good quality, protein, mm -hmm. energy, you name it. Yeah. Right? And help now our producers to understand how do we integrate all of these mm -hmm. into proper, properly formulated diets, mm -hmm. good rations, such that we can see the performance that we're looking for yeah. in the animals yeah, that because we I, produce. I think over the years, Bosejo had a, started that program, the Lucinia and also the Kin. Okay? So it's a question of continuation to ensure we have good feed. Because I don't know what exists now. We have a feed mill in St. Lucia right, that produces feed. I don't know whether um the uh producing a broad spectrum of feed for ranging from the animals that we're talking about the mm. livestock whether where where are we of that but we will speak about that after our break you're watching agriculture on the move stay tuned don't go away
The Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Food Security and Rural Development continues placing heavy emphasis on the concept of food security. It's our prosperity, our future. Livestock production is a support program offered by the Ministry. It guarantees 28.65% and 40% market share for poultry and swine production respectively. There is ongoing disease surveillance and treatment, improved bloodline support, laboratory support, training and technical support. You can learn more on livestock production. Contact the Chief Veterinary Officer at 468-5620 for further information. Welcome back to the program, Agriculture on the Move, of course, with me. Mr. Dean April, who is the Livestock Technical Officer attached to the UBEC and the SOC program, which is the livestock section of the whole program as it relates to assisting farmers here in St. Lucia. Uh, we spoke about, the before the break, the feeding program. What is in existence now? And do you believe we will be able to reach our target um, as far as the proper feeding is concerned for animals in the next, say, five, six months? All right. So there are, we have a, we have a lot of work to do. Eh? I know. Just, just putting that I out know. there. <laughs> I know. I <laughs> know. a lot of work to do. <laughs> now, currently, I mean, we do have some, what I would consider to be reasonable supplies of commercially available feed. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, the, the whole concept is, when we try to look at alternative feeds and alternative feed ingredients, especially those what, that we can produce, mm -hmm. it's not a situation where we're saying, okay, replace the commercial concentrate feeds that we get from our various suppliers. That's, that's not the argument. The argument is that these feeds are supplements mm -hmm. and they have to be treated as such. Mm -hmm. What we have fallen into, we have fallen into the, the convention of feeding these things alone. alone yes. Especially when it comes to our herbivores, mm -hmm. our cattle, sheep, mm -hmm. goats, mm -hmm. rabbits, mm -hmm. they cannot survive well on these feeds alone. Mm -hmm. Okay. So one of the things that we have to look to do is, like we were saying before, build comprehensive rations that mm -hmm. are made up of multiple ingredients. We have some byproducts that come out of various agro processes mm -hmm. that can also go into feed. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of fisheries waste. We used to do it before, we stopped, I don't know mm -hmm. why. Mm -hmm. But all of these can contribute significantly to raising the bar when it comes to the standard of nutrition that we provide for our animals. Mm -hmm. So hopefully within the next few months, we can build on the forage producing component. All right. Um, we're trying also to see if we can put in um, some measure of fodder, forage and fodder conservation. Mm -hmm. Now, it's the dry season. If you look outside, our pastures are down to everywhere look like a brown, food, brown, a ball brown. field. You're, you're too, you're, in fact, as you mentioned that, I remember a, a, a guy was smart, a farmer was smart to, to um, induce his, his um, cattle to, to, to eat the dry grass. They, they gave them um, green, green goggles, <laughs> <laughs> green <laughs> sun <sunshades. laughs> You know, <laughs> and, and, and these are some of the things that we really have to start mm -hmm. paying attention to. Mm -hmm. So in the rainy season, one of the concepts that I always use with, 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 with any system, in the rainy season when we have excess yeah. growth in the stock of that, mm -hmm. we store mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. you understand? And we store that for times like now, we have feed in reserve, whether it be in the form of hay, whether mm -hmm. it be in the form of silage, whatever the case may yeah. be, but yeah. we have some conserved, Definitely. conserved Definitely. material. Definitely. Definitely. So hopefully we can make some significant strides when it comes to that producing forage properly managing it properly harvesting conserving some and that should see us significantly augment at least in the short term mm -hmm. the availability of feed resources okay okay all right so hopefully we can get that done the dressing up percentage now as it exists looking at our feed to what is required where are we with that so Again, work to do. Yeah, <laughs> work yeah, to do. Yeah. So overall dressing percentages will not really change for the species. Mm -hmm. But what we can look at is the efficiency in terms of how fast we can produce animals. Okay. All right. So we're looking at things like growth rates and so on. Okay. I know it is possible, and you say to some people and they'll watch you the eye open big so mm -hmm. it is possible for us to produce animals in about a year time, cattle that mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. weighing a thousand pounds, mm -hmm. twelve hundred pounds live weight 
off of grass alone. Mm -hmm. It is possible. Okay. Right? It is also possible from a reproductive standpoint for us to get one calf every year from a cow. Mm -hmm. right? I know personal instances where we can cut it down to all 11 months. Okay. Right? Now, these things are all possible in theory. Mm -hmm. But if we, if we don't take stock of what it is that we're doing now and look at it and say, okay, it's taking us three years to produce an animal mm -hmm. at 1,500 pounds. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't take so long, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Same thing with our pigs. We are feeding pigs past six, seven months, eight months. Mm -hmm. That's too long mm -hmm. because that time between five months and, 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 the, and the eight months, we're wasting feed. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah, yeah, the yeah, amount yeah. of feed they actually convert yeah, in, yeah, a lot yeah. of it is going right back mm -hmm. out, mm -hmm. you know? And then now you talk about the environmentalists will tell you, your animals polluting the environment. You understand? Mm -hmm. So all of these little things, mm -hmm. you know, there are a lot of tweaks that can be made in the system. Mm -hmm. So we have... I don't know what to do. Yeah. Where are the farmers going to benefit now as we speak? What, 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 what are they getting from the project now? Good. So in terms of emergency response, like I said, the farmers will get some, uh, some support with regards to their water conservation. Mm -hmm. um, and that will spread across multiple species, cattle, sheep and goat. Rabbit farmers are included in there. Poultry farmers are included in there. Um, and even persons, agro-processors within the livestock sector will also benefit okay. from, from that water yeah. conservation um, mm -hmm. exercise. Okay. When it comes on to the breeding and genetics, we do intend in the very short term to make some of the animals available to potential farmers, farmers mm -hmm. that do have the capacity to introduce the bloodlines onto their holdings. Um, the AI will be a little bit further off, but that will also come in um, probably after the, after the six months mark. Mm -hmm. But again, that should help to boost or stimulate increases and improvements in production that you see on the ground. The interaction and engagement with livestock farmers, I don't know how much of that has been done in recent times, okay. but that again is another immediate action because we need to really get a sense of what farmers are doing, yes. why are they doing what it is that they're and doing. And what is it that they're not doing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And what are mm -hmm. some of the challenges and mm -hmm. what are the things that are preventing them from actually adopting better practices. Better practices yes. you know? yes, so yes. that again is something that can come forth almost immediately. And then ultimately what we really want to try to get to do is to understand the scope mm -hmm. of production. Like, like, where are we? You know, we, 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 like, we eat our pork, we enjoy it. But where are we in terms of the numbers, in terms of how much we, we are producing? You know, we know we're self-sufficient in eggs, eggs, I think, yeah. right? But what about the other the classes? Mm -hmm. You know, we still mm -hmm. have to import those, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So we need to really take a stock, run a benchmark, and know where we're starting now so that we can know, okay, yes, after the implementation of this phase of the project, we were able to move the mark by mm -hmm. X amount. Very, you know, that, very important. That sort of thing. Because we need to know where we are now with our importation, okay? Uh, we need to lower our food import bill, okay? So we need to know what is in existence now and by what percentage of what time we need to bring it up. All right, uh, and reduce our, our thing. So, I mean, is, th is that part and parcel of the mandate of the, the project? Well, the project monitoring and evaluation component does speak to that, mm -hmm. right? Especially when you talk about an emergency response plan. Correct, yes. Because that yes. emergency response plan, what you're measuring that against is, you know you suffered losses, you know you would have suffered some sort of damage mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. So the recovery yes. has to be production parameter based. Yes, That's the only way we yes. know if we go in somewhere. somewhere yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah. The, the monitoring and evaluation component of the project definitely will take into account some of those parameters and you know, in talking to the officers now, you know, they're saying that, yeah, you know, some people are struggling to produce animals in the given amount of time, given time mm -hmm, frame. Mm -hmm. Our broiler chickens take in six weeks, seven weeks, sometimes a little more, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. we can actually pay attention to the systems on the ground, what is happening and where we are actually able to achieve better efficiency. I didn't, I, I'm not sure if I, if I heard, I didn't hear poultry involved in that, in that? Not no. immediately, no. Okay. All right. Not immediately, no. But since we're talking livestock sector. Exactly, because I, I hear you mention the tanks, water tanks. Right. They are going to all, the, are those farmers going to be involved in that too? Yes. Okay. Some of the broiler farmers will get support with the water tanks. As far as training and capacity building, um, what's in there for the farmers? Right, so we're going to focus more on the pig farmers, the sheep and goat, we'll call them the ruminants, sheep, mm -hmm. goat, and cattle. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to try to do is get the nutrition program, get it out there, all right? Start to promote a lot of the more sustainable practices when it comes to feeding animals. So mm -hmm. that will take into account the training. Mm -hmm. Also, with 
the importation of what we call improved bloodlines. Blood yes. There are certain critical components, like we were saying earlier, that have to be put in place. So just by getting improved genetics doesn't automatically mean that we're going to see an improvement in production, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So there definitely must be those support systems, right? Looking at your nutrition, looking at your animal comfort situation, mm -hmm. right? Animals that are not properly housed, not properly managed, mm -hmm. not properly fed. Mm -hmm. You know, we still have a, a mentality of people walking around kicking animals, and then you wonder why they can't get pregnant, why they can't deliver sure. the little <laughs> sizes that they're supposed to. You know, all of these things. <laughs> so it is a comprehensive, comprehensive. package yeah. that's supposed yeah. to come yeah. into this animal husbandry business, mm -hmm. and then we can see, okay, yes, how we can move our 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 sector holistically. Is there support for pen rehabilitation or pen build, new pen building? Not at this time, mm -hmm. but again, it's something that in the training, it will come out. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. where there are, especially from a disaster risk management standpoint and climate change and right, all of that, right, right, right. there are definitely, you know, training points that can touch on housing, all right, development of better housing, installation of housing, a simple critical component. Now, we're building structures to house animals. These structures must be fitted with rainwater harvesting systems. Must, 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 you know, must, there's no way that you have a piece of roof and yeah, you don't have yeah, a drum to collect yeah, some water. Yeah, like, yeah. And these, these are some of the things that should be part of our policy, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. in, 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 in moving forward. Mm -hmm. you know? So you, you want to produce livestock, you want to produce ruminant animals or herbivores, you must have, mm -hmm. it could be 100 square foot, it doesn't really matter, mm -hmm. but must have for the bank. Mm -hmm. You know, again, these are things, these are policy positions that we can take and drive them and continue to educate, teach, and promote these practices so that you can see improvements in production. But the limited time you have available for that project, okay? It's ending in October, right? Supposed to. Okay. What are you telling the farmers now, moving forward with, with speed and haste? Okay, so definitely in terms of participation, mm -hmm. we definitely would like to, not everybody, will be an immediate beneficiary and that's okay. and that's and that's okay. something that we just have to live with okay. all right not okay. everybody's going to benefit from everything all but right. again it is important that the farmers remain engaged with your ministry agriculture officers with your extension officers and so on so that we know what it is is going on mm -hmm. we know what you're doing mm -hmm. so yes this project would have come may come and go but what if there's another opportunity that mm -hmm. comes right afterwards mm -hmm. we have already been working together all right. So what we really want to encourage is that level of participation. All right. Yes, you may not necessarily be an immediate beneficiary, but your participation is important. We need to know what, you, what, what you're struggling with. What are you doing? What are your production levels like? We need to know. So that way now we can craft and design more programs mm -hmm. that can further support do the you, sector. Do you believe that we are well on our way to achieve the, th that project goal within the time frame? Where are we now? Are we slow or are we ahead? We're picking up speed, mm -hmm. right? Um, it would have been nice if we could have been well on our way or we could have taken off probably a few months ago. Mm -hmm. However, um, I think that this is just the nature of our bureaucratic process and all of these things because we have to work within that framework. Mm -hmm. But what I can assure our producers is that every effort is being made to ensure that we gain maximum benefit okay. under this component of the project. Any final words from you, sir? Final words? Boy, I'm really excited about the implementation, mm -hmm. um, especially mm -hmm. for the livestock sector. Mm -hmm. um, I know it is much needed, and definitely we're looking to see you know, some significant improvements in what it is that we're doing on the livestock side of things. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Dean, thank you for being here. My pleasure. I'm happy uh, that project is available and the farmers are going to get benefited in that regard. Um, also moving into the Volet um, livestock station, that ties in nicely. And I, I'm thinking um, they can go there when they need to get stock. They can get stock available to them at the right time. Yeah, thank man. you again for being and I wish you success. Thank you. You've been watching Agriculture in the Move. Uh, we want to thank you for viewing the program. The livestock farmers, please speak to your extension officer to get some more information because we need to move that project. We need to bring down our, or lowering our food input bill. So the onus is on you. Let's do it together. Agriculture is our business. Eat fresh. St. Lucia's best. I'm Philip Sidney saying goodbye. Thank you, sir. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move. 